the four championship drivers were asked about um, how they feel the direction of the sport is going. They all expressed excitement and, and uh, confidence. The representatives of the four te championship teams did the same thing. And I think that in, the, in light of maybe some of the things that are happening with sponsorship troubles, the 78 team closing, um, your truck champion not having a job yet for next year, I, I think that the perception could be that maybe things aren't as great as everyone wants to portray. And I also understand from a, from a collaboration standpoint with your stakeholders, they probably are better than they've ever been. You did mention headwinds. Um, what is NASCAR's position on where you are right now? Is everything great or is there a lot of work to be done? Listen, I, I, um, we always have work to be done for sure. Um, the sponsorship component of this, there are, and I've been, uh, I have been accused of, of being Pollyannish before. Um, I believe the state of sponsorship in this sport continues to accelerate in a positive manner. Not just because we have a new sponsorship model coming. If you look at the state of where the teams are, I went to a, a Penske summit that I was fortunate enough to speak at, and I was speaking to, uh, to Bud Denker or, or Tim and they say, hey, we have, we have 15 new sponsors here. That, that's fantastic. You talk to Joe Gibbs, hey, we've got a bunch of new sponsors here. Sponsors that have been signed at the sanctioning, bottle, uh, sanctioning body. So do I think the state of sponsorship is, uh, we're always seeking to have new sponsors in the sport. We have a competitive advantage um, over other sports, I believe, because of our great fan base. Our fans understand what it means to be a sponsor of NASCAR, and they are, they are, they understand that that product or service or whatever it is. If I support that, that it helps my sport. So that's the competitive advantage we have. I think we'll continue to to make gains on the sponsorship front. Do we have a lot of work in collaboration with our race teams and our racetracks? We do, and that's what we're doing. So we are going to be laser focused on on driving consumption. So driving ratings. Our digital and social numbers are doing incredibly well. They're through the roof. Um, so sponsor uh, fans are engaging in different ways. We've got two great broadcast partners, and those broadcast partners are, um, we'll work with them as well. We need to drive ratings, uh, and we're going to do that. So we're singularly focused on that. And I don't know if you can be singularly focused on another thing, but we are going to be focused as well on, on driving uh, ticket sales. It's important. Is there a scenario where you see Brian France may not returning to his to his uh, his position and um, you know you mentioned Jim France being here a lot and that was one thing Brian was criticized for you know do you if Brian comes back do you expect him we'll, we'll see him at more events um, you know I can't speak to whether Brian's coming back or not I do know that Jim France is our chairman and CEO I do know that Jim France is incredibly involved in this sport at the racetrack, off the racetrack. Um, you know, I've heard some criticism about, hey, why isn't Jim here, right? Why isn't Jim sitting right now talking to you? I can assure you that Jim France is talking to a lot of people. And it's my job to talk to the media. Jim's not something Jim feels is, is part of what he wants to do. Uh, we'll respect that. Um, but. He's talking to Roger Penske, and he's talking to Jack Roush, and he's talking to racetrack owners, he's talking to drivers, he's talking to sponsors. That's what Jim does, and he is he is driving this sport, and as we look to 2019, we are going to execute against Jim's vision. Caleb, then Chris, then we'll move to Jacob. Caleb was the kicking the tires on that. In the political sphere, the, a presidency is defined by their first 100 days. You're on about day 48 of your uh, presidency of NASCAR. <laughs> kind of what have you seen accomplished and what do you want to accomplish in the next 52 days and in the future? How do you think I'm doing so far, Caleb? <laughs> um, you know what, I, I'm uh, day 48 or whatever day. It seems longer than that. I'm not sure why. Um, I'm having a lot of fun, in, in all seriousness. And I think that um, I've been fortunate to have people around me who are very good, um, both at the sanctioning body level and then the different folks that we touch at racetracks, at race teams, um, our media partners. And this sense of collaboration that exists, um, and you, you heard it yesterday, you heard it the day before, it, it's at an all-time high. So I believe that's part of what my job is. So talked about Jim's vision. We're going to execute against that vision. Um, the role that I can play in doing that, um, I, I hope it's meaningful. Um, and I do believe as we head into 2019 that our best days are ahead. 
seven, eight years ago, NASCAR implemented the uh, the next program. Really, as this youth movement was was starting to swell a good bit, uh, as the driver turnover continues and the and the age gets younger in all three of the top series. I mean, how much excitement does there continue to be, and what is NASCAR doing to try and help engage the fan base with some of these younger drivers to to try and keep that attachment? Yeah, I think it's uh, listen. Our NASCAR Next program has been a it's been a huge success. So you look at um, you know a Danny Suarez or a, um, Kyle Larson uh, and others that have been part of that program, um, or someone currently like a, a Haley Deegan. Um, I, I believe that yeah, they are our future. So we've had some very high profile. Uh, folks retiring, drivers retiring, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, Carl Edwards, Danica Patrick, um, and others, Carl, uh, uh, Matt Kenseth. Um, it's, they're there, and obviously Matt coming back and what the future looks like <laughs> with Matt, I'm not sure. But I think it's, it, we are poised now with this next generation, which I believe is the best crop of young drivers that we've seen in two decades, um, both at our national level and then what's going on in, you know, down in the tours uh, in ARCA and others that we will see progress. So that particular program is just one thing that we do. Um, we do need to have them connect, and they connect in different ways than traditionally that we've that we've seen. So a lot of it was all sponsor driven. Do we still have sponsors who are activating against the sport and driving a you know driver personality and um, and driving uh, looking at a driver's. Um, you know how well known they are. We have some of that, but we need to make sure that they're doing things themselves. So we have some of our own channels, whether it's NASCAR Social, NASCAR Digital, um, and then they have their own social opportunities, and then working with their race teams um, and their sponsors. So it's a it takes a village, and it is important for us to make sure that we have the tools uh, in place that allow those drivers to be successful. So when it is their turn to get on the big stage, that that they can take advantage of it and our fan base knows who these drivers are. Steve, when do you expect the ISC transaction will close and what type of structural changes are you expecting? Is NASCAR planning to make a similar bid for SMI and is are, are there any plans by NASCAR to sell off any interest to outside organizations? Um, Nate, I can't comment on the first one. I can't comment on the second one. I can't comment on the third one. Um, triple, play. triple play. You can ask another question. I'd be happy to answer another question <laughs> that you might have. There have been various people lobbying for changes to the schedule, shortening the season. Um, which kind of changes? As NASCAR evolves, do you feel are, are most realistic to happen with in regards to the schedule and shortening in the number of tracks you go to? And what's not in play? Are there some things that are so ingrained in the sport that you're not willing to consider changing? Um, in short answer, Dan, I think everything's in play. So we've heard from our fan base that they would like to see more short track racing. They want to see more road courses. Um, they'd want to see less cookie cutter tracks, whatever whatever that means. Um, I think that we are looking with our broadcast partners and with our tracks and with our teams and drivers to get input on what each of them believes would be an ideal schedule. Um, and then we're obviously doing fan research as part of it. So do I believe that everything is on the table? I do. Um, will we see a lot of the things that have been talked about? So more short tracks, more, um, more road courses, double headers, midweek racing, um, pulling the season forward, all those things would be in play. Don't know what's going to happen, um, but we are working diligently on what a 2020 schedule would be. As soon as we have something to talk about, we will get to you. I'm just wondering what updates you could offer us as far as NASCAR and the sports gambling front is concerned and what you see as the advantages and disadvantages of sort of leaning into that a little bit further in the future. Yeah, I think listen, a lot of sports are taking a hard look at, at, um, at sports gambling. Um, and, w and we're doing the same. So are we as far along as some other leagues or teams? At this particular point, we're not. Um, our sport's unique, right? And we need to make sure that we have 
um, looked at all angles. Um, I do think there are opportunities on the sponsorship front. I do believe there are opportunities uh, from an engagement standpoint, from a fan standpoint. But we have to make sure that we're being very disciplined in how we get there. So we'll, we'll probably have more to talk about uh, as we head into 2019, uh, but nothing more to share today.